Today's word, we are coming from Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7. And we're going to look at verses 15 through 23. Matthew 7, verses 15 through 23. And we're going to be reading from the New King, New King um, James Version on today. All right, Matthew 7, 15 through 23 from the New King James Version on this morning. All right, verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits will you know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, Beware of Wolves. Beware of Wolves. As I mentioned, uh, we have looked at this before, uh, but in the past week or so, more than one individual has had questions on religion and Christianity. So I felt the need to look at this once again, and I believe this is going to be eye-opening for many on today. You know, here in the text, it's, it's interesting that Jesus talks about false teachers, but when he talks about them, he compares them to wolves. What kind of animal is a wolf, and why would Jesus compare false teachers to this animal? Well, allow me to give you a few characteristics of a wolf. Um, you see, wolf, um, they have a strong scent of smell. Wolves, they can smell something a mile or more away. Under good conditions, when wolves will howl, they can be heard up to 10 miles away. Uh, wolves, they also prey on the young or the sick or other animals that are weak. In other words, wolves will try to catch the easiest and the most vulnerable animal. Stick with me. <laughs> uh, it's also interesting to note uh, that when wolves kill, uh, they don't kill for sport, but they kill for survival. So here in the text, I find it uh, very interesting that when Jesus talked about false teachers, he compared them to wolves. Uh, to paint the picture, let me give you the backdrop of what's happening and what's taking place in the text. Here you have Jesus is teaching one of the most famous sermons ever known to mankind. We know this sermon as the Sermon on the Mount. 
The Sermon on the Mount is listed from Matthew 5 to Matthew 7. It's a sermon that gives that is given by Jesus himself to his disciples. Um, the Sermon on the Mount includes many different topics. It talks about the Beatitudes or the blessings. Uh, it talks about salt and light. It talks about anger. It talks about adultery. It talks about divorce, uh, loving your enemies, how to pray, how to fast. It talks about worry. Uh, he talks about how we should judge. Um, he also talks about the wide and the narrow gate. So if you have questions on how to live or what to do in certain situations, I am pretty sure you can find it in Matthew 5 to Matthew 7 with the Sermon on the Mount. So here you have Jesus preaching and teaching the greatest sermon ever uh, with all of these great topics. And he decides to talk about false prophets or false teachers. He says, beware of false prophets. Beware, meaning, watch this, uh, to look out for, to be cautious or to be alert. Um, be aware of, of what? Um, be aware of who? What am I looking out for? Watch this. You're looking out for false Prophets, not real prophets, but false prophets. And you know what false is. If you have ever taken a, a test before, you know what false is. Uh, you may uh, have a question on a test and it states to uh, list or answer true or false. It's a 50-50 question. And sometimes you have to uh, fill in the bubble if it's true or fill in the bubble, if it's false, Jesus later on in the sermon shows us how we can fill in the right bubble. He says, beware of false prophets. It's interesting that he that he says, beware of false prophets at the time, because uh, he said, beware of false prophets prophets. Uh, before he says beware of false prophets, he said uh, something else. And, and uh, what did he say? Well, it's found in verses 13 and 14. Watch this. In 13 and 14, it says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Hmm. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow, watch this, is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to eternal life. And there are few who find it. Hmm. So Jesus, he talked about the narrow gate and the wide gate. And then he started talking about false prophets. Hmm. What is a narrow gate? What is a wide gate? Well, a narrow gate, watch this, a narrow gate is a gate that a lot of people try to avoid. It's a gate that may lead to a little persecution. Hmm. The narrow gate. It's, it's a gate that may lead uh, uh, to a little backstabbing. The narrow gate. It's a gate that can lead to a little disappointment from time to time. But in the end, it can lead to eternal life. <laughs> On the other hand, you have the wide gate. Many people will uh, try to find the wide gate. Uh, people enjoy walking through the wide gate. Uh, there are a lot of pleasures in the wide gate. But unlike the, the narrow gate, the end does not lead to eternal life, but it ends in destruction. 
So when Jesus picks up in verse 15 by talking about these false prophets, he says, beware of them. In other words, false prophets and false teachers love to teach about the wide gate. Mm. The wide gate is more appealing. The wide gate looks like so much more fun. The wide gate is, it, it looks more attractive, but the wide gate, it leads to destruction. Grace Center, beware of wolves. <laughs> beware of wolves who love uh, uh, to teach and talk about the wide gate. Beware of wolves who love wide gate doctrines. Wide gate philosophies, wide gate theories, wide gate teachings, and wide gate sermons. Oh, there is a whole lot of wide gate teaching going on. <laughs> There's a whole lot of wide gate preaching going on. Grace Center, that's why we have to beware of those wolves. Wide gate preaching, more appealing, more fun. Give me this, give me that. I can have this all the time because it's mine, mine, mine. It's a whole lot of wide gate teaching going on. Watch out for these false prophets, Grayson, because they will not come in wolves' clothing, but they will come in the clothing of sheep. Mm. <laughs> I know this is, this is eye-opening for a lot of you all. Look, share this. If you have not shared this word by now, I think you see where I'm going. Share this, this message on this morning. Watch this. False prophets, false prophets, they will not come in wolf's clothing. They won't do it. They will come in the clothing of a sheep. They will come in the sheep's clothing. In other words, they will appear to be non-aggressive, meek, mild-tempered sheep. Mm. But don't be fooled because they are not sheep. They're wolves. Mm. But they're not just wolves. They are ravenous wolves, as Jesus called them. Ravenous, meaning greedy or extremely hungry. In the Greek here, it also means a robber or an extortioner. Extortion. What does that mean? It means, watch this, trying to blackmail someone to give you something or you'll expose them. Extortioner. Extortion is illegal. Extortioners have no integrity. Extortioners uh, have a lack of character. Oh, grace sinner, we need to beware of these wolves. On the outside, they look like sheep, talk like sheep, walk like sheep, and uh, act like sheep. They do sheepish kind of things. <laughs> and they do those sheepish kind of things to simply fit in. They don't care about your well-being. They don't care about what's happening in your world. Uh, they don't care that your husband said he was going to leave you. They don't care that you just got laid off. They don't care that you have to go back to the doctor. Uh, how do I know they don't care? Because they're not sheep. They're wolves. They don't care anything about you. They're wolves, <laughs> but they're not just wolves, Grace Center. They're ravenous wolves, vicious, ferocious, robbers, and extortionists. That's why Jesus said, beware of these false prophets. Grace Center, it's important that we, that we watch out for these false prophets and these false teachers, because uh, they have uh, infiltrated the churches. Um, 
Jesus felt that it was important to tell his disciples then, and he feels it's important to tell his disciples today. Because don't fret, Grace Center, uh, because there are uh, there's a way that we can detect, that we can decipher sheep from wolves. How do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's an open book test this morning. Watch this. Verse 16, it says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Notice what Jesus first said. He said, you will know them by their fruits. In other words, sooner or later, their actions mm. will reveal who they really are. You see, a, a, a wolf can only pretend to be a sheep, but for so long. Because eventually the wolf is going to slip up. And the wolf is going to get too comfortable around the sheep. And when the wolf gets too comfortable around the sheep, the wolf is going to let out a howl instead of letting out a sheepish sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the sheep, watch this, the sheep, when they hear the sound of the wolf letting out that howl, they're going to start asking questions. They're going to be like, what do you just say? Uh, do that again. Uh, 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 why is your nose different than ours? <laughs> why are you so much larger than we are? What? Why are your ears shaped like that? You know, I'm just using analogies here, but you, you get the point of what I'm talking about. <laughs> because now, watch this sheep. They have questions. Because the wolf has uh, uh, revealed his hand. The wolf has slipped up because you can only pretend, but for so long. And even Jesus gives us the formula on how to spot them. He said, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? In other words, thorn bushes and thistles don't produce grapes or figs. Hmm. Which is a way of saying nothing good can come from listening to false teachers and false teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Nothing good can come out of it. And unfortunately, we have a lot of false teachers and false teaching in the churches. Mm -hmm. They're doing a whole lot of howling, but they ain't saying nothing. <laughs> They're making a lot of noise, but they ain't saying nothing. They're screaming and hollering, but they ain't saying nothing. They want you to buy miracle water from Israel and send you handkerchiefs in the mail. My Lord. They're making a lot of noise, but they ain't saying nothing. And the reason they're not saying anything is because they don't know or they don't have anything to say because they are wolves, not sheep. Hmm. Jesus, he continues by comparing a good tree uh, to good fruit and a bad tree to bad fruit. Hmm. And he says, we'll know them by their fruit. In other words, their actions will always tell on them. Hmm. He continues here in verse 21. And he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven. Hmm. Grace Center. I know this may come as a shock to you, but not everyone who say they go to church or they watch church online and they go to this virtual service and that virtual service. Not everyone who does that are saved. Amen. Now, everyone who raises their hands and says hallelujah are saved mm -hmm. because just like you have false prophets, you also have false Followers, mm -hmm. they pretend they love Jesus. 
They mm -hmm. pretend to be righteous. My Lord. They pretend to be holy. But Jesus himself said, hold up. Not everyone, not everyone who says Lord mm -hmm. will enter in. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But only those who have done the will of my Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. What's his will? Well, his will is to receive mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Amen. As Lord and Savior. And how do you do it? Well, you do it by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that he came and he died mm -hmm. just for you. Mm -hmm. That's the will of the Father. And to truly mean it. Mm -hmm. As I always say, it's not just lip service. It's also heart service. Amen. You have to mean that thing. It's not just, you know, saying those things just to be said in front of other people. Just to appease the crowd, just to appease your family and friends and so forth. No, you have to really mean it from your heart. Mm -hmm. That's the will of the Father. But Jesus continues in verse 22. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? And done many wonders in your name. Uh, so they 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 prophesied in his name. They cast out demons in his name, and done many wonders in his name. And what was Jesus' response to this? Was well, let's look at verse twenty three. Verse twenty three. Watch this. It says, uh, "And then I would declare to them." I never knew you. Hmm. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold hmm. on. Time out. Third second time out. Time out. Time out, ref. Time out, pastor. Um, um, um. You just said they prophesied in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> they, they cast out demons. In the name of Jesus. And 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 and, and did many wonders in the name of Jesus. So 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 what's the problem, Pastor? <laughs> You're confusing me on this morning. Um well the problem is, watch this, oh watch this. This will be an eye-opening for a lot of you. Watch this. Here's the problem. The problem is those individuals, those false prophets, those false teachers, those wolves, watch this, the problem is they don't have a personal relationship with the one they're claiming to know. Mm, yeah. know it. Mm. Sure, they performed miracles, mm. but when a miracle happens, that simply means a supernatural power was behind it. Mm. Now that supernatural power, it can be divine or it can be satanic. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Ah, I'm gonna let that marinate mm. for a little bit. Jesus. Sit on that just for a few seconds. Mm. It can be divine. Or it can be satanic. <laughs> you watch people by their fruit, mm. by their actions. They claim to know Jesus, but they really don't know Jesus. Because if you really knew Jesus, Jesus would also know them. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Now, I'm not talking about uh, 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 Jesus not knowing them as far as their existence. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about Jesus knowing them as one of his own. Mm -hmm. It's in the text. It's in, I, I, I didn't write it. Uh, Jesus said, I never knew you. Mm. In other words, I have not known you to be one of mine. Mm. Mm. Jesus. And and the reason I never knew you is because, watch this, 
You never knew me. Mm. I hope you guys are getting this. Mm. Jesus. Uh, this is uh -huh. good. I, I, I gave you the opportunity to know me. Uh -huh. mm. The time when I sent someone to share the message of the cross with you, you pushed them away. The time when I woke you up in the middle of the night nudging you to receive me, mm. you pushed me away. Mm. You went to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. You clicked in. You logged in to virtual service after virtual service Sunday after Sunday. The preacher would give the invitation and you stayed in your seat or you did not confess Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior and you just kept pushing mm. me away. My Lord. Therefore, I never acknowledge you as my own because you never acknowledge me as being your Savior. Mm. Mm. I gave you chance after chance after chance. I never knew you. These are individuals who really don't want all or part of Jesus. They only want uh, what they want. Mm -hmm. They have one foot in and one foot out. Mm. Well, Pastor, how do you know that? Well, at the end of uh, that verse, it says, Depart from me, you who practice mm. lawlessness. My Lord. Practice. Lawlessness. I'm going to say that three times. Practice lawlessness. You see, when you practice something, you're trying to get better at it. <laughs> this is better the second time around when I'm preaching this. <laughs> when you practice something, you're trying to get better at it. Um, Michael Jordan is the in my opinion, uh, the goat of basketball. Uh, funny how I'm saying goat. We're talking about sheep and wolves. But anyway, he's <laughs> he's the greatest of all time in basketball, in my opinion. Um, uh, Jordan is known for uh, 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 working out hard. Uh, him and Kobe are two individuals that, that are known to like really, really just go hard practicing and practice or doing things on their own. They're known for this. If you talk to a lot of uh, uh, NBA players, um, they will tell you and, and, and give stories of how hard they practice. That's how they became so great. You know, they would get to the gym before anyone else gets there. Okay. Get there early, practice harder than anyone else on the team. And by them practicing so hard and doing the same things over and over and over again, they got good at it because they practice hard. They didn't say, you know what, we're not going to, Practice. We're not going to try to get better, but we're going to practice harder than anyone else. And by them doing that, it took their uh, skills to another level. You see, here in the text, um, um, those who practice lawlessness, uh, these individuals here are not practicing holiness. And living right. No, they are practicing lawlessness. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they're practicing how to get over mm. oh others. My God. They're practicing how to fool others. Uh, they're practicing how to manipulate others. And by them practicing something over and over and over again, they're getting better and better and better at it. Jesus said they are practicing lawlessness. Mm. Uh, mm. These are the ones that Jesus is talking about. 
Grace Center, there will be many on that day saying, Lord, Lord, and they won't make it in. Mm. They will simply not make it in. You have your false teachers and you have your false followers saying, Lord, Lord, but on that day, Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Because they are practicing lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Now let me say this right through here. Because sometimes when you talk about this particular verse in scripture, it makes a lot of Christians nervous. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're wondering, well, I mean, what's going to happen to me on that day? Mm -hmm. Listen. Listen. Pay very close. Whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing. Listen to, to this right here. If you're not practicing lawlessness and you're trying to do the right thing, you may fall short. You may, you know, make some mistakes along the way, but you're not intentionally practicing lawlessness. You're OK. Amen. He's not talking about you. <clears throat> He's talking about the ones who are not trying to do the right thing. They know exactly what they're doing. They're, mm -hmm. they're practicing. Trying to get better at. Fooling others. Tricking others. Okay. Mm -hmm. Manipulating other people. That's who Jesus is talking about. He's not talking about the ones who have really, really with their heart. Confessed and believe in Jesus and trying to live right, trying to live holy. But every once in a while, the old person comes back and you slip up and you mess up. He's not talking about you. Hmm. He's talking about the ones on purpose hmm. who really don't care about Jesus. My Lord. Really don't care about all this church stuff. <laughs> hmm. They're just, they just want to do what they want to do. They're the ones. That Jesus is talking about. Mm. But can I also point out something to you in the text that we need to pay close attention to? Um, many religions make the claim that Jesus was just a man, mm. right? Um, you have false teachers that also make this claim. But if you pay close attention to verses 22 and 23, Jesus claimed to have the authority mm -hmm. of God himself. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Verses 22. It says, many will say to me. You see that? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Mm -hmm. Cast out demons in your name. And done many wonders in your name. And then I, talking about Jesus, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, mm. you who practice lawlessness. Oh, that shuts down the whole argument. <laughs> when people say that Jesus was not God. Jesus is not God. That shuts it down all by itself right there. I can show you many other scriptures that will show us that when Jesus came, he did come as God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is God as well. He's mm -hmm. part of the Trinity. But this right here shuts down the whole argument. You can write this scripture down, put it on your refrigerator, put it in your iPhone, whatever you need to do. Watch this, 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 this right here. It shows us, it is clearly showing us that Jesus Christ is also God. He's part of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But you have false teachers who say otherwise. But not according to scripture. When Jesus came to earth, he came as God in the flesh. Mm. I'm closing. I'm closing now. I've, I've, I've given you uh, the characteristics of wolves. I've given you uh, 
characteristics of sheep. And I think it's only appropriate that I also give you some characteristics of a shepherd. Mm. A shepherd normally walks in front of the sheep to lead them, mm. to guide them, Come and to be now. an example for them. Sometimes the shepherd would sing as he leads the sheep. This was a way that sheep would become accustomed to the shepherd's voice. Mm. Shepherds will also carry a rod and a staff. Mm. A rod was between five to six feet and the shepherd would place it in their belt. The rod would also be used as a weapon. Therefore, if any predators would try to harm the sheep, the shepherd would use the rod to protect the sheep. But shepherds would also carry a staff. The staff is much longer or much uh, is longer than the rod. And the staff, it has a hook on the end of it. The staff is, is used to guide the sheep. In other words, if the sheep begins to go in the wrong direction, the shepherd would use the hook in the staff to gently steer the sheep in the right direction. Mm. The staff would also be used to pull sheep out of situations where the sheep is having a difficult time getting out. Another interesting part of the staff is that at the bottom of it, it has a spoon-shaped shovel. This was used if the sheep wandered off. The shepherd would take uh, some mud or some dirt, all right, and he would flick it in the direction of the sheep to get the sheep's attention. Like, get back over here. <laughs> Uh, you see, Grace Center, there are some wolves that love to take advantage of sheep. They love to manipulate sheep. They love to harm sheep. In other words, they prey on harmless sheep. Hmm. But you have a good shepherd. <laughs> hmm. Oh, if you have a good shepherd like we do. That shepherd knows how to use a rod mm -hmm. and a staff. He'll use the rod to, to beat off the predators. He'll use the rod to protect the sheep. Because when the sheep are in danger, the shepherd pulls out the rod. But if the sheep ever get off course, a good shepherd knows how to use a staff. He'll take his staff and reach out and pull you back in. And if you happen to fall into a mess, a good shepherd will use that same staff to rescue you out of your mess. Mm. Grace said, no matter how many wolves are out there, we have a good shepherd. Amen. That good shepherd, his name is Jesus Christ. <laughs> he protects he provides, he leads, he guides, but most importantly, he saves. Mm. And depending on the situation, sometimes he'll use his rod and sometimes he'll use his staff. Mm. He'll use a rod to beat off the wolves, but he'll use a staff to say, I need you to come back home. Mm. He'll use a rod to beat back circumstances and situations that have the potential of causing us harm. Mm. And he'll use the staff to reach down deep to pull us back to where we belong. Amen. Depending on the situation determines whether he will use the rod or whether he will use the staff. Mm. We're sheep. There are some vicious, ferocious, ravenous wolves out there. Mm. There are some false teachers out there. There are some false followers out there. If you are a sheep, Grace Center, stay in the fold. Mm. 
If you want to become a sheep, come into the fold. Yes. And once you come into the fold, stay in the fold. Right. Don't allow the wolves out there with their false teachers pull you away from the faith. We have a good shepherd who will use his rod to protect you and he'll use his staff to guide you. But just make sure you stay in the fold. We need to be aware of these wolves out there. Amen. They're out there with false teachings, false doctrines, and they're trying to pull sheep from the sheepfold. Mm -hmm. But the good shepherd, he can use his rod to beat them off. Hmm. And use his staff to pull us back in. Amen. Grace Center, beware of every false teacher, every false prophet, of the false doctrines out there. Beware of those wolves. The virtual doors of the church are open at this time. The invitation is extended. Perhaps you've been watching for some time, or this may be your first time watching on today. And you have been on the fence about receiving Jesus as your personal Savior. And something clicked today. A light bulb went off today. And you're saying, you know, today is the day that I give my life to Jesus Christ. If that is you, you can pray this prayer along with me and you can receive Jesus right now. Just say this prayer along with me. Say, dear God, thank you for having me on your mind. On today, I confess Jesus with my mouth and I believe in my heart that he came, that he died that he rose from the grave for me. If you have prayed that prayer, that simple prayer, and you meant it from the heart, you are now saved. There are angels in heaven rejoicing because you have prayed the prayer of salvation. Look, we would love to hear from you. Send us a private message, private note, comment in the comment section. We would love to hear from you if you have prayed that prayer. For all others, if you have any special prayer requests, uh, you can let us know as well. Uh, we would love to pray with you. Amen. This is uh, in the tithes and offering time. Amen. We have several different ways in which you may be able to give. Um, if you go to our website, thegracecenterga.org, click on that give link. Um, has several different ways in which you may be able to give. You can give directly through the site. Uh, you can give via our uh, GiveLify app. You can also give via Cash app, which is the Grace Center GA. Uh, or you can mail your checks or money orders to us uh, at the post office box. All of the information should be uh, in, the, in the feed there. It's also on the website, thegracecenterga.org. Amen. Look, I hope and pray that this message has blessed you on today. I pray um, you have learned something as well. Maybe this has been eye-opening to you uh, of, of, of how we all need to be more alert and more aware of, of what's happening and what's, what's, what's going on. Uh, with false teaching and false teachers and, and so forth, even false followers. Because uh, a lot of times you have people uh, trying to lead you astray. Uh, uh, a little inside thing here. I, for, I forget which sermon I was preaching a few weeks ago. Uh, I forget. Uh, but of course, we're, 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 we're preaching from home. So things happen in the home as I'm, even as I'm preaching. And... I remember it was I was talking about like false teaching or something that day and the doorbell wrong and the doorbell wrong from a false te or false teachers <laughs> that same day. Uh, you, you guys probably hear the doorbell go off 
That's what it was. <sighs> Beware of false teaching. Beware of false doctrines, other religions who contradict what we have in the word. Be careful of that. Just be careful of that. Study your word to show thyself approved. A workman that not need it. Be ashamed of the gospel. Study your word. Amen. Study your word. And if you study your word, uh, uh, when, 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 when other things are said, um, you may not know exactly where to go in the word, but something's going to click like, that don't sound right. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you and letting you know it's not right. Okay. But just be aware of those things. All right. We're done. Let's pray as we're dismissed on today. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for this word that you have given us. Please continue to use us for your glory, Lord. Um, I'm praying for the individuals today who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. I pray that uh, you will help them in this new walk, this new journey with you, Lord. Send someone across their path to, to help them. Uh, this may be new for them, and they just they need some help. They need uh, someone to walk alongside them to help them with their questions and all of the things they are needing answers to. For all others, any uh, special prayer requests that they may have, you know what the needs are. Heal them where they need healing, restore them, uh, open up a door for them, provide a financial blessing for them. Let your will be done in their lives. You know all of the things and uh, a situation that they may be facing or up against, Lord. Have your way with every petition that they may have, every supplication that they may have. Help them, Father. Bless the tithes and the offerings that have been given. Um, I pray that it is multiplied and increased in their lives. I pray that those who wanted to give but just didn't have it, bless them as well, Lord. As we leave this place, Father, but never ever leave your presence, please go before us. Make every crooked place straight in our lives. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. All right, everyone, I love you. Until next week, be safe. Take care. Be blessed.